Now, would I do this again? Probably not. I Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right. In this video, we are going to talk about 23 bread and butter bolos. These are items that I sold on eBay for a profit. Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Um, I sourced these items really cheap and I flipped them for a profit. What do I consider bread and butter, a bread and butter bolo? A bolo is an item to be on the lookout for. And that is, you know, different for everyone. Let me know in the comments what you consider a bread and butter bolo. Uh, minor items that I pick up cheap and can sell for $35 or less. I don't care if they're long tail or sell really fast, as long as I flip them for a good price profit. So in this video, we're going to talk about those bolos. I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it and what it sold for. Let's get started here with the first one. And this one is Intel American products. It's a lamb. It's an Easter plush. And I got this at the Goodwill bins and I sold this for $13 and 64 cents plus shipping. The next item is this Build-A-Bear. It is the Snow Leopard. This also came from the Goodwill bins. I listed it um, for 20. It was on sale at 35% off and it sold for my sale price of $13 plus shipping. There is a date code on these. I would take a picture of that. Do I always do it? Probably not 100% of the time, but if you remember, definitely do it because people look for certain years. This one was from 2015. And I also show that the tag is clean and free of any marks. A lot of people like to write names on these, which you can still sell them with the names on it, but um, just show the item, show its condition, sh take a lot of pictures. So $13 on this and the buyer paid shipping. One thing to also look at is the eyes. If there are scratches and scuffs on the eyes, make sure you take a picture of that and disclose it in your listing. If the eyes look good, I don't think that's necessary, but that is another question that you may get asked. Uh, plush collectors do sometimes um, want the eyes to be in perfect condition if they are collectors. The next item I picked a whole bunch of these up, like six of them, five or six from the Goodwill bins. I looks like five. And these sold so quickly. Um, I set my price based on comps. They were selling so fast that I increased my price and then they continued to sell fast. There was no packaging, but it still had the original remove before use on it. I did plug them all in and just check. I don't really know what they are, but I was like new old stock. I'm going to pick these up. This one sold for a best offer of $17 plus shipping. Clifford the dog. This also came from the bins. I sold this for $13 plus shipping. So that was my sale price. This is a vintage American lock company padlock with keys. Some of the padlocks go for big bucks. Definitely look them up if you see them. This one came from a garage sale, paid $2 for it, sold it for $30 plus shipping. This one did take a little longer to sell. This makeup came out of a makeup case. Um, with the makeup case, it was going to be way too awkward and heavy and just... It was a long case to ship. I'm like, this is just not worth it. So I took everything out. So I knew that everything was new, never used. I got this at a thrift store and it was like a gift set in a box, if that makes sense. And I paid a dollar for it and I sold this for $16.24 plus shipping. This did take a long time to sell. Ooh, cha-ching. You know what? I have been on whatnot selling and now that I'm back on whatnot and I'm trying to keep up with a video a day on YouTube, my eBay, like trying to list and just do everything. It's like overwhelming. I'm trying to figure out how to balance again. Listed some stuff on eBay the other day and I have seen an uptick in my sales because I listed some items. So a lot of people say, if you don't list on eBay, your sales go down. I still have sales even if I'm not listing because I have so many items in my store, but I would say listing consistently is very, very important. Let's talk about this. This item was super long tail, took forever to sell. 
But again, I'm a long tail seller. I don't worry about it. I list it. I forget it. I throw it in a tote. And when it sells, it sells. Everything usually sells eventually. I got this at the Goodwill for $1, sold it for $10. And the buyer paid shipping. So not huge profits, maybe not my best pickup, but you never know with these kits. A lot of crafters kits can do well. It could have just taken the right person that was looking for this and it could have sold quickly. You just never know. Here's another Build-A-Bear. This one has the original tags. I got this at the Goodwill Bins. I sold it for $9.92 plus shipping. There were a lot of these listed on eBay. Um, probably would have been better for me to cross post this over to Mercari and Poshmark. Uh, I typically list all of my items on eBay and then I'll take time and I will sit down and I will just cross post a bunch of items all at once. That is what works best for me. That's because I am so busy with YouTube and whatnot and all the other things I'm doing. So what I would recommend for you watching, if you're not doing whatnot and you're not a YouTuber and you don't have to balance everything out, I would recommend cross-posting as onto the platforms as you go. Definitely a great idea. Uh, with List Perfectly, that's what I use. You have the option to start your items on a platform and cross-post to the other platforms, which is what I do because it works for me. I can do it in bulk when it's convenient for me. Now, like I said, if you don't have all these other things going on and you want to cross post as you go, you can use the list perfectly catalog. You can list directly into the catalog and then cross post your items from the list perfectly catalog to the other platforms. And I think there's maybe 10 different platforms you can cross post to. I only use three. That's all I can handle right now. I was trying to do Etsy and Facebook and I'm like, this is just too much. So Mercari, Poshmark and eBay are my three platforms. So you list to the catalog and then you cross post to the other platforms. If you start in the catalog, all of those items are connected under one number. So when you go to delist, if an item sells on one platform, you can pull it up and list perfectly. It's much easier to delist your items. I have to manually go look for mine, which is no big deal for me. I just do it from my phone. Um, but the catalog is great. I have a video down below that shows you how to use the catalog. It also shows you how to bulk cross post like I do. And it's got some tutorials at the end from List Perfectly. So if you're already using List Perfectly, you may want to go check that out because there may be some features you're not utilizing that could be really helpful. You can get 30% off your first month with coupon referral code Bolo Buddies, all one word, if you decide to do list perfectly. It's a pay by the month. You can pick um, one of three levels. I am on the business plan. If I was using the catalog, I would pick the pro plan. But because I do it the way I do it, I go with the business plan. So check out that video down below. See if it's a good fit for you. I know a lot of people are complaining that their sales are down on eBay, which Mine are, but I have not been listing as much. Where do you shop? Where do you buy your items? If you go on and you're looking for something and you're not just going to a big box store and you want to support another reseller, where do you go? I shop on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari because I sell on those three platforms. I'm guessing there's a lot of people that only sell on Poshmark, only sell on Mercari, and those are the platforms they're buying from. So again, different eyes on your items. Items that are flooded on eBay sometimes do better on the other platforms. I have a plush video where I show you that these plush are selling for way more on Mercari than they are eBay. So definitely go check out that plush video. Okay, I spent a long time on that, but I feel like these things are important. All right, I sold this spoon. This is probably one most of you would not mess with. But again, I like to pick up things that are a little bit unexpected. Can I sell it? I felt like this could be something that somebody could make a really cool piece of jewelry out of. I got this out of the Goodwill bins and I sold it for a best offer of $5 plus shipping. Now, would I do this again? Probably not. I mean, I didn't make a lot of money. I probably have maybe 50 cents or a quarter in it. I mean, I still made money and I get to share it with you guys, but it wasn't my best, my best buy ever. 
This little guy took a long, long time to sell. I actually listed this. You can see right up here. If you ever want to know when you listed your item, you can look up here. I listed this in 2020 of October and it just sold. So when I tell you guys I am a long tail reseller, I list it and forget it. I'm not kidding. Now, should I be um, maybe ending my items and relisting them? Yes, I probably should. But I've also heard that when you let your items sit, they show up better on Google. What's your feedback on that? Let me know down in the comments. I think I got this at a garage sale for 50 cents and I think it sold for the asking price of $9.30 plus shipping. This is a vintage Barbie clothing lot. These items were damaged. I got these out of that crazy box that Noel, Farm Girl Scavenger Noel sent me from Donatella Bottolino's YouTube channel. I will link that video down below. Please go sub up Donatella Bottolino and Farm Girl Scavenger Noel. Donatella sells to resellers. That used to be her big thing was reseller boxes. And she had this reseller box that was a disaster. And she was like wide eyed, you know, looking at what this was selling for. Couldn't believe it. And go check out the video and you'll see what Noelle bought it for. She sent it to me and I listed everything. And you guys are going to see how I turned this crazy box of damaged items into big money. It's incredible. It really is incredible. And Noelle knew that I could do it. And she knows the value in these things. Her channel is jam packed with bolos and education. You got to go check them out. Uh, Donatella is on whatnot under Donatella. She's over there now mostly. So um, auctions for you. Also, you can get reseller boxes from her. And her YouTube channel will be linked down below as well. So definitely check both of them out if you are looking for inventory. And Farm Girl Scavenger Noel is also selling on Whatnot. You guys, you got to come over to Whatnot. There's a link down below. You'll get $15 to shop. I'm Bolo Buddies over there and I love it. So I uh, use my referral link and come hang out. Even if you don't buy anything, just come hang out. So this sold to She Picker, who is also known as Two Sister Pickers. She bought this and then she bought another lot off of me, which you will see in another video. But this is her store. She's a Bolo Buddies member, which means she has joined Bolo Buddies memberships on this channel, level two, to be um, featured in videos. And since she's a Bolo Buddies member, I thought I would go ahead and pull up her store here for you guys to check out. And I will link her eBay store down below. And she is looking to do YouTube content very soon. So be on the lookout for that. And she is also going to be on whatnot. So super excited about that. And she bought these clothes, um, $31 plus shipping. The next item is this yarn. Um, I got this from an estate sale and this yarn was a little dusty from storage. So it's going to need uh, a good shaking out, but I just disclosed that under the condition and I got this at an estate sale for about a dollar. Took a best offer of 21 plus shipping. And all of the pieces were kind of sitting in the same area. And I ended up selling it. And it sold a lot quicker than I expected. I sold this for $24.80, my sale price, and the buyer paid shipping. This is a vintage 1981 Witch Wizard decorative air freshener. It's an air freshener. I got this out of a thrift store mystery box. So my cost of goods was probably a dollar or less. I sold it for a best offer of 10 and the buyer paid shipping. Here's another one of those kilowatt things. This one sold for full, um, I'm sorry, $18.60 plus shipping. This is another one of those replacement parts I was telling you guys about just the remote for the breathing fire dinosaur. If you type it into um, the eBay search, like what it says, you can usually figure out what it goes to. You can also use Google image search. Google image search is free. It's called Google Lens. Definitely get it. I have a video on it. Uh, type in Bolo Buddies Google Lens. I show you how to use it. It is a free tool that every reseller should have. I got this out of the Goodwill bins and I sold it for 
$13 plus shipping. The next item is this Activision Skylanders portal. It's a USB. I don't have any clue what was on it. Um, something with Skylanders because I picked it up in a whole lot uh, with a game console. I'm like, I'm going to see if I can sell this separate, not even knowing what's on it. And I sold this for $9.75 plus shipping. The next item is this Parents' Choice Unicorn Lovey. Um, this did have a snag. The hair on the unicorn was matted and it had a light stain. And it still sold pretty quickly. Um, I sold this for $9.75 plus shipping. I bought this off of wholesale in a plush lot. And I had my cost of goods was about $1.68. So not a huge profit. But I just wanted to prove that even though it was not in perfect condition, these loveys, people need them as replacements because their kids lose them and they don't care if they're perfect. They just need to make their kid happy. So um, will they sell not in perfect condition? Yes, this is a prime example. Am I going to get top money for it? No, but I still made a profit. Um, wholesale is a great site to sell stuff wholesale and also buy stuff wholesale pre-owned and new items. It's what they're just, it's resellers selling to resellers. And I do have a referral link down below if you guys want to check that out. This here is the Chucky Halloween costume knife. This came out of the Goodwill bins and I sold it for $14.95 plus shipping. It's just a plastic knife from Chucky. Ah, kind of freaky, right? Uh, probably cost me about 50 cents. This is a Blaze and the Monster Machine flip and race Blaze car from Nickelodeon. And these sell pretty good. If you can find these Blaze and the Monster Machines, definitely pick them up. Some go for up to $25. This was a bread and butter, sold it for nine bucks plus shipping. And I still have one left. So you flip it and it will turn into this. So the wheels just flip over. It's kind of fun. All right. The next item are these vintage Halloween embossed witch plates. And I sold these for $12.99 plus shipping. Honestly, when I bought these, I thought they were going to be a home run. I thought they were going to sell super quick because they're vintage Halloween. Nope, that was not the case. This was very long tail. I bought this in a big Halloween lot at a garage sale. And I listed this back in 2019. So I told you I'm very patient. This is a Simply Genius Snowman Singing Dancing Light Up Plush with cosmetic details. With cosmetic defects, not details. This came from a plush lot. Farm Girl Scavenger Noel bought me from Donatella Bottolino. So Donatella will sell plush in big bundles. And um, it was a reseller lot. And me and Noel unboxed it on um, like a collab video through StreamYard. So if you guys want to see what else I got in that lot, definitely check out that video. I ended up taking a best offer of 10 and the buyer paid shipping. And the last item is this Piglet and Pooh talking Winnie the Pooh from 1998. Um, I always say that Winnie the Pooh is tough for me to sell, but this one did pretty good. It sold for $32.50 plus shipping. And I paid $2 for that at a thrift store. Let me know how you guys do with Winnie the Pooh. And it's funny that I mentioned that because over the weekend, I picked up Winnie the Pooh uh, Disney store and Piglet plush. So they are available. I'm selling them together in my store. So those are listed. And then I also picked up a Pooh puppet. So that is listed as well. So we'll see if I have as much luck with those. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. There was a lot of rambling in this video. I apologize. Wanted to tell you about some resources that you guys can use to help you with your business. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Again, go check out that whatnot. I would love to see you at a show. Even if you just come hang out, no pressure to buy. Like I say that always, no pressure to buy. Thank you again. Video is popping up here and here. One down below, a subscribe button. Um, if you're not subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe subscribe and thanks for watching. One thing I recommend doing is showing this little tag that has the date on it. Um, that's going to answer maybe a question for you or uh, for your buyer by the pictures that they're not going to have to message you. Some people are lurk looking for, oh my goodness, I cannot talk. 
Let's start again. Ah! Okay. Let's do this. Ah! Okay. So, um, the build of air. More eyes, more platforms. People that buy or that sell on eBay, buy on eBay. People that uh, buy on Poshmark. Man, let's try that again. Think about this. Where do you shop? <laughs> this is going to be much easier to say it this way. That Farm Girl Scar 